Hello everybody and welcome to this short video of myself and Liz Walker and this is part of our series of videos uh, supported by Pearl Flute so thank you to them. Uh, we're going to talk today about vibrato and I wanted to just get Liz's opinion. Uh, Liz is a specialist in Baroque playing and I think in terms of vibrato it's a bit of a hot topic amongst flute players. Indeed. And I thought it's just good to open up your mind and ask you about maybe the relevance of it depending on the era and also whether it is something that can be practiced or whether it's something that's felt or, you know, all those sorts of things. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, vibrato is something that they don't like to touch because it is very personal. Um, having said that, from my perspective, uh, I learned to play without any vibrato uh, when I started Bort Flute uh, because vibrato on a wooden keyless flute um, is added as an ornament. Uh, we know this from the resources that we've got um, from the Brock era that say um, that vibrato should only be added on a long note. And in fact, to begin with, it was done by shading the hole because there's no keys on a, mm. on a Brock flute, so you can shade a hole a bit like a trill. Um, and because of that, um, because of the ability I have to play without any vibrato, I do like to see that uh, vibrato can be used um, as an expressive t tool, particularly um, on long notes, um, and particularly if you're playing Baroque music on a modern flute. Mm. Um, but then that can be developed um, into your classical repertoire, into the early romantic repertoire, where, again, I would still use vibrato um, as, as, a, as a tool. Uh, it, it can warm the sound. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a great technique full stop because if you can play a note without vibrato, you know that your airstream is really supporting your sound. And then when you add the vibrato from the diaphragm, you know that you've got that support in your diaphragm. So there, there's, there's all sorts of reasons why actually being able to play a note completely straight and then, then warming it with vibrato is a good skill to have. And then when you want to give that little extra to a note, you can add the vibrato you're naturally going to have, have a warming of the sound um, that, that'll give you more shape. So it's already built on that solid foundation without exactly. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like there's two parts, I suppose. It sounds like musically it may depend on the, the style the piece was written in and or the expectations of it from a musical history point of view, which yes. you sort of alluded to. Yeah. Um, so as and when it may be relevant, and you have to do your background research sometimes, yeah. don't you, on, on composers and on Absolutely. the music. Uh, but then the second part of it, I suppose, is how you um, how it's physically delivered, yes. should we say. Yes. So could we touch on that a little and maybe Absolutely. with a little demonstration? I mean, some teachers would um, click a metronome on and, and get your diaphragm sort of beating, if you like. Mm. Um, personally, I, I'm, I'm not a great... Um, I'm not greatly in favour of that because I think vibrato is much more subtle than that. Um, but what I would suggest is that you practice playing notes straight. And you have that ability to start the vibrato and then come back to the straight note, which is all to do with controlling the airstream. Okay, so when you're um, delivering the vibrato, so yes. to speak, physically is that that's coming from diaphragm yes, support and, and yes, you're you're, you're sort of manipulating manipulating yeah. the airstream okay. uh, with the diaphragm, which which controls the the release of the air in itself. It, that muscle is is able to push the air faster and slower, and it is important to get the vibrato to to go above and below the note. It, very, very often we tend to push the vibrato so that it, sh it pushes above the note and then of course you're going to sharpen it. And actually we want that, that release drop as well. So you get the... It's very important to go under the note as well okay. as above the note. So sort of... Exactly. Across a line, yeah, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So obviously, it's one of those things that could probably be overdone. I suppose you work with students about suitability of, and does that depend on the student or it does just indeed. the piece? Or I both? mean, some some students I really don't talk about vibrato to because it does. It feels to me that they have a natural feed, flair for for when to use vibrato, um, but. As they become more senior, more more experienced flute players, it is worth touching on, you know, did you mean to use that vibrato? 
let's have a think about why you're using it mm. or not using it. And I think the only students that I would step in and, and uh, if they're younger is, is if they seem to be just using a wall-to-wall -wall verbatim without really, ex really experience experiencing it as, a, as an expressive tool. Yes. And it ceases to become an expressive tool if that verbatim is on every single note, in the same way that if you play fortissimo all the time, you can't express the pianos. So you, you, we, yeah. we need that Light flexibility. And shade. Yes. Exactly. Yes, yes. And there's always one, isn't there, who plays fortissimo all the time. <laughs> um, okay, so is there any sort of playing example you could give us? Yes, I'd, I'd, I'd play you a little bit of Bach, where you would expect me not to play vibrato, um, but I'm adding it on the long notes. So as you say, with a modern flute, that may be the way to add some of that interpretation. To give it a little bit of shape. more style yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, okay, fab. Any other examples? Uh, I've got some Schubert, which I just thought of the other day, um, the Arpeggioni Sonata, um, which is one I've recorded actually on a very early Louis Lott flute from 1859, where it's, you know, it's a conical wooden flute. And I was exploring the use of vibrato from a Baroque flute flautist's perspective. Uh, but now coming to it on my new pearl flute, it's sort of opening up some new ideas for me a, a, about using vibrato a bit more sparingly. I'll, mm. I'll, it's sort of work in progress in my mind, uh, but here it is. That's interesting, the change of instrument equals a change in Yes, and because it's, as I say, it's work, exp work in progress for me, I'm not still quite sure where I want to add that vibrato. So it, it sort of, it's, it's, but knowing that I can play it without and then just, just create that moment, mm. um, I'm not quite sure where I want to put those moments at the moment, but that's yeah, fine because it can of the evolve. Journey, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, and the takeaway is knowing when and why as opposed to just becoming and something that's And being deliverable. able to do with and without. With and without, yes, yeah. absolutely. Good. Okay, well, hopefully that's sparked a bit of conversation. Yes, You'll have the Baroque people debate. after you. <laughs> Indeed, they will. <laughs> yeah, with their wooden flutes. Um, okay, well, we hope you've enjoyed that, though. There are plenty of other videos we've been doing with Liz, so do check those out. Uh, but for now, that is it for us, and we shall speak to you very soon.